Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Brian does not pay. <laughs> You're careless, Bud. You can't be careless. Not in this business. What do you mean, careless? The judge had a ton of wreck and cast iron hung on him. How could it come up? I don't know. It's that the papers say something about gases in the body making the stiff flow black to no rock. Sure, it's physics and chemistry. That's what. So now we got to go to college and study physics. There's no finish to this. What about careless finish? Can you make that scientific? Yeah. I'll make it scientific. I'll fix things good with an ice pick. In the interest of good citizenship and law enforcement, we present Crime Does Not Pay, based on the famous Metro Golden Mail series of that subject. In just a moment, you'll hear Summertime Take. Starring Charles Corbin. Starring Charles Corbin as Bugsy Portnoy in Summertime Take. Summertime is a good time for most people. Their vacations and all that goes with them. The resort, the fun, the games. The freely spent money that has been saved for just this purpose during the other 11 months of the year. And where there is freely spent money, you'll find those who dip their fingers in it for their own purposes. Ozzie White dipped his fingers into that money and came up with double handfuls. Ozzie controlled the slot machine, the one-armed bandit, which stood invitingly in every bar, every casino in the resort area where Ozzie operated. Year in and year out, the nickels, dimes, and quarters flowed through the machine into Ozzy's pocket. And Ozzy had an organization. There was Specs as accountant, for one. Ozzy trusted Specs and listened when he had something to say. I don't like it, boss. It don't look good to me. No, what's wrong? Last year, the machines at Swan Lake gave us twice the take we're getting this year. That's all? Same thing at White Lake. How'd you run across this? I was just playing around. The figures looked uh, off this summer, but the hotels are as packed with suckers as last year. So I ran a check. Here's the figures. See, boss, 1947, 48, and 1949. Mm -hmm. I see. How do you figure it? Me, I just play with the numbers, boss. And somebody else is playing with the text. Well, I wouldn't be hasty, boss. Why not? You're sure of your figures, aren't you? <laughs> I ain't no CPA, but I can add and subtract. Looks like somebody's been subtracting before we ever see the dough. Bugsy, come on in here. You want me, Ozzy? I called you, didn't I? Who's the collector in the Swan Lake District, Bugsy? Uh, Wallace Sage. You know that. You been around lately? Yesterday. You notice anything different about him? Well, he's got some new shirt. Still. Anything else? Nothing special. If there was, I'd notice it. Yeah, I guess you would. How about Carol at Carter? Nothing much. Why? Any new shirts? No, nothing. Mm -hmm. Carol, it's collecting for us at White Lake. The takes off a low this year at White and Swan both. I get it. Somebody needs a lesson, eh? Yeah. And you're the best teacher I know, Bugsy. So take care of it for me, will you? Nothing like the country in the summer, I always say. Well, nice of you guys to go out of your way to take me up to the lake. Take nothing of it, Wally. Take nothing of it. Keep your eyes on the road, Smithy. Well, don't worry about him, Bugsy. Smithy's the best driver I know. 
I like to sit next to him just to watch him work. <laughs> Bugsy likes the back seat. That's where he works. Uh, that's the lake up ahead, Smitty? Yeah. Pretty in the moonlight, ain't it? Mmm, nice view. There's a better one up ahead. I like this one. Park for a minute, Smitty. Let's enjoy the moonlight. Sure, sure. <laughs> Never thought you were romantic, Bugsy. Oh, I got my moment. <laughs> yeah, you certainly have, Bugsy. Boy, quiet out here. Nearest place is the inn, five miles up the road. That's so. Hear what he said, Smitty? Yeah, I heard. Get the end of the rope, Smitty. Hold, oh, Smitty. Hold. Oh. Oh, I got it, Bugsy. Now hold it. Yes, okay, sir. So Wally, when you collect for us, you collect honest and can in every nickel. Every nickel. Oh. He's done, Bugsy. Mm. Nothing like it, Smitty. Piece of rope over the head from the back seat. Crossed ends. You pull on one, I pull the other. The guy just can't make any noise. First pull breaks his windpipe. Yeah. Smooth. Smooth. Let's get rid of him. Right. You got enough line to tie him with No you? line. Picture wire. Rope will rot in the water. So we'll get the stuff out of the trunk. Okay, sure. I always figure this is simpler and faster than a cement jacket. Twice around the ankles, and the arms cut behind. Very neat. It's a slot machine, mate. Plenty heavy. Now, there's a terrific idea if I say so myself. The jerk dips into the tick, so we hang a base around his neck. <laughs> oh, that'll teach him. Uh, push that wire tight, Teddy. Yeah, I got it. It'll teach him all right. So we'll keep him down. Plenty of rocks. That's why I picked this spot. Yeah. I will hitch this one to his feet. You got the clippers? Yeah, my back pocket. Here. Good. I'll hold it. Come on, take his head, Betty. Hey, can't we drag him? He's awful heavy. And leave the marks on the ground? Oh, they wouldn't like that. Betty? Yeah. <laughs> Never thought of that. Hey, is it part of the point? Just a step or two. Water's kind of deep off the point. Oh, what a night for a sweater. Look at the moon and the water. Yeah, Wally likes the country. <laughs> hey, next time, let's take the body to the edge first and try to wait down there. Hmm. You got something there, Smitty? Ready? Set. Okay. We'll swing him. Toss him out as far as we can. When I say three, let him go. Right with you. One. Two. All right. That does it. He'll never come up. Let's go. <laughs> Boy, that'll teach him a lesson. <laughs> been to Swan Lake before? No. Have you? My second summer. What do you like about it? Oh, everything. Mountains, the sky, and the lake. It's never cold, this lake. Not like summer, I've been in. Well, that's because it's artificial. Fed by small streams in the mountains that were dammed up years ago. <laughs> what are you, a walking encyclopedia? <laughs> <laughs> no, a rowing encyclopedia. <laughs> Sometimes I wish the summer could go on forever. Betty? Yes, Jim? Betty, I... No. Jim, are the large fish in this lake? Well, they stock it with fish from time to time. Trout, mostly. They don't grow very long. I see. Why? I thought I saw fish. It was sort of white and large. Seem to be floating. Well, fish don't float unless they're dead. Where is it? It's over there. Hmm? Now turn around to the right. Looks more like a white glove to me. Maybe it is. Funny, a glove floating out here. Let's get it, hmm? Am I headed for it? The left door. That's it. Yeah. Now both. 
<laughs> Good. Hold your course, sailor. Aye, aye, ma'am. Hold it. Get back the thing, whatever it is. Don't look, for heaven's sake, don't look. What? What is it? It's no glove. It's a human hand tied to another. Oh. The body's floating just below the surface of the water. Hey, Bob. Bob. Hmm? Well, it looks like Bugsy Slippin' here in the paper. Body found in Swan Lake, tentatively identified as that of Wally Sage, small-time mobster. Give me that. Uh, yes. From the condition of the body, which was in a remarkable state of preservation, it was judged that the gangster had been dead about a week. Identification was made from the face. Bugsy, come on in here. What's wrong, Ozzy? Wrong. Here, read it. Up after. What's the matter? You slipping? I don't see how. Maybe, maybe we barely lugged him with a slot machine base tied to his chest and a rock on his feet. Read the end of the story. The body might have remained at the bottom of Swan Lake indefinitely had not the warm waters of the lake accelerated the accumulation of gases within it. Police authorities pointed out that gases retained within the body brought about the buoyancy sufficient to overcome the weight slash to the body. Oh, for the rotten luck. Looks like Wally had stomach trouble. Gas. One week. One stupid week and they find him. Oh, what, boss? They can't pin it on us. You're careless, Bugsy, and you can't be careless. Not in this business. What do you mean, careless? The jerk had a ton of rock and cast iron hung on him. He... How could he come up? I don't know. Except what I read in the papers, but the stiff floated, rocks or no rocks. Sure, it's chemistry and physics, that's what. So now we've got to go to college and study physics. There's no finish to this. What about Carol at finish? Can you make that scientific? Yeah. I'll make it scientific. I'll fix him good. With a nice pick. When Smith and I get through with him, he'll stay down forever. <laughs> In just a moment, Crime Does Not Pay will continue with Summertime Take. Starring Charles Corbin as Bugsy Portnoy in Summertime Take. The summer moved along. The collection from the slot machines went on, and Spex checked his figures on receipts against the preceding years. Again, there was a mysterious discrepancy which was traced to the collections in the White Lake District. Apparently, the lesson taught Wally Sage had failed to have its proper effect on Carolette Carter. And so it happened that once again, a car sped along a highway with Smitty in the driver's seat, Bugsy in his usual place in the rear, and Carolette Carter in front, next to the driver, next to death. Like the country, Carolette? I can take it or leave it alone. <laughs> Uh, this is your district here, isn't it? Sure. Sure, this is White Lake right here. Uh, any points of interest around here, huh? What do you mean, points of interest? Like views or something. I wouldn't know. I tend to business strictly. Oh, that's so. Well, well, well. Ever been in uh, swimming? Too cold for me. So I heard. Springford Lake, ain't it? I suppose I leave that to the same jerks who play our machines. Suckers. Does anybody ever win? Hmm? Once in a while. Gotta have a come on. So we let a couple of them hit the jackpot. But mostly they get three lemons. <laughs> hey, what are you slowing down for? We'll never make the hotel fall midnight at this rate. I got plenty of time. 
I just want to look at the view. Since when are you interested in the beauties of nature, Smitty? Just a few weeks now. Especially in lakes with cold water, a nice deep spot. Yeah. Especially in lakes with cold water. What's with you guys? You are, Carolus. Yeah, but not so long. Time's up, Carolus. You... You've got to learn to swim lesson like a leaf. Don't ever try to put on one over an Aussie. Oh, Smitty. I'm bullet. You're going to tell the throat. Here. Here's the ice. Ice pick. Where'll I give it to him? In the belly. So the gas will get out, right? Come oh, on, Smitty. Give it to him. Fix him up like a soup cleaner. The more holes, the merrier. Send it out. You can get it on the radio. See you later. Bugsy, turn on the radio, will you? Nothing on now but news. I know. Turn it on. Sure, sure. <laughs> I never knew you were interested in their national situation, Ozzy. I'm not. Business is too good around here. Shut up now and listen. And so much for the news picture overseas. Here at home, with sensational developments is the discovery of the body of Carolus Carter, kidding. found floating in White Lake upstate. Carter, a mobster thought to have been connected with a gambling racket, was strangled and stabbed at least 15 times, probably with an ice pick. Wired to his body with several weights, and it is apparent that he had... He couldn't come up. He just couldn't. But he did. I don't see how. He was so full of holes and gas just couldn't stay in. But it did. When did you use the pick on him, Bugsy? How do you mean? Before or after you killed him? During. Oh, you gotta do it after. Why? We had a job like this back in Detroit. When you stick him before, the blood runs to the holes and stops him up, see? Oh, I get it. I never thought of that. It looks like you never thought of a lot of things, Bugsy. But two months, Hussie. It's two months. It's a cold lake. It's like an icebox. What do you want me to do about it? There's nothing you can do about it. We just got to ride along and watch our step for a while, that's all. They can't tie it to us. Well, next time you'll know. Yeah, 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 sure. Well, that's that. When are you going to show bullets his territory, Bugsy? Anytime he's ready. No time like the present, I always say. Mm. Why not? Smith has got a car. We can drive up now. Suits me. Okay with you, Ozzy? Sure. The quicker, the better. Go on, beat it, both of you. Have a good time. But don't play the machines. That's a sucker's operation. This is nice country, Bugsy. Yeah, if you like country. Hey... Remember how Wally liked the moon on the lake and then overcomes the rope? Yeah, you two really have that operation down to a science. And how? Bugsy sits back where you are, see? The victim sits where Bugsy is right now, next to me. We stop the car. Bugsy throws the rope over his head. We each take an end. ba ba boom. That's all. Hmm. Neat. Quick. Quiet. Who said it? Neat. Quick. Quiet. The victim sits where Bugsy is. All right, right now. How's Ozzy to work for us, Smitty? Okay, swell. But he don't like two things. Guys would steal from him, and guys would make the same mistake twice. You can't say I blame him. The same mistake twice. Ozzy doesn't like that. 
and I'm sitting with the victim says, Who is this bullet smoking anyway? Why did Nelson give the collecting job to Smith? He was in line for it, or to me. What's the matter, Bugsy? Yeah, he said nothing for five minutes. Uh, nothing to say, just uh, watching the scenery. Sure is deserted around here. Yeah, that's why we do most of our jobs in this neighborhood. This is the neighborhood. Why did Smith make this job? Did he bring his bullets in to do a special job? That's what. And me. That's why we're out here. Me, I'm next. Next on the heat parade. What's the matter, Bugsy? You sick? You shaking like a leaf? Uh, uh, no, uh, nothing. What's the matter, guy? You seen a ghost? Hey, when Bugsy gets to say ghost, brother, it'll be more than one. They're kidding. Like I did with the others. They're trying to keep me from seeing where we're heading. Hey, Bugsy. You want I should stop for a minute? No. No, no, don't stop. Hey, what's with you? You don't get me. Not like with Wally and Carol. I know the trick. You don't get me. He's gone nuts. Bugsy, cut it out. No, no, I'm getting out. I want to live. You don't get me. You don't get me. Hey, Bugsy, leave that door alone. Bugsy, you're nuts. No, I'm getting out. I'm getting away now before you tie a rock to my feet. Uh... Come on, Smitty. we got to find him. <laughs> Brother, how do you have our next... Yeah, find him in these woods at night. Where? Which way did he go? Back this way, into the tree. No, oh, no. You don't get me in no woods. Not with Bugsy nuts and packing a piece. Besides which, I ain't no Indian. I hate the country. Somebody got to be inside. Help! Help me! Oh, I'm coming. Someone's there. Someone's coming. Hurry, please, hurry. They're after me. Now, what's all this about? You've got to let me in. I'm in danger. Two men, they'll kill me. Around here, nobody in this neighborhood but us. Joe, no, let the young man in. You can't keep him on the porch all night. Oh, yes, my Well, come in, come in. Oh, thank you. Thank you a million times. Joe, look at the young man. I'm looking. Silly fella. But his clothes, they're all torn. His face is scratched. I I jumped from a car. They, they were going to kill me. Who was going to kill you? Smithy and Bullet. You've got to hide me. They'll be after me. I they won't let me get away. Young man, I think you've been drinking. <laughs> no, it's the truth. You've got to save me. Joe, where are you going? The telephone. Sounds like business for the sheriff to me. <laughs> yes, yes. The sheriff, I talk. If I took they'd protect me. They let me leave. How do they do that? Okay. It's just a phone. Oh. Hello, Sadie. I want the sheriff. Quick. You saved me. I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Now don't you worry about that. Living way out here, we don't get much chance to help folks when we can. Sheriff Winters. Uh, hello, Sheriff. This is Joe Karaski. Hi, Joe. You got trouble out your way? Maybe. Uh, hold on. We've got a visitor. Oh. I'll let him talk to you. Here, young man, take the phone. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you. Uh, this is the sheriff? Yep. Who are you? Uh, this is Bugsy Portner. You know the name. Never heard of you. You heard of Bugsy White? Yes. So what? I, I worked for him. He sent me out to... To get it like Wally Sage and Carol's car gun. Tonight, I know how they got it. And I was going to get it too, only I jumped before... How do you know how they got it? I, uh, uh, I did it both times, but I want to live. I got to live. You can save me, but you got to help me. I tell you everything. Please, please, come for me. They're looking for me now. Hurry, hurry. I live in jail. I'll find I'm dead. I'm dead. Come for me. I don't want the rope and the water and the gas inside. I'm afraid. A brain, hurry, please, please, that's the one thing I know. Crime does not pay. Charles Corbin, who was starred as Bugsy Portnoy in Crime Does Not Pay, will be back with you in just a moment.
Now, here in person is Charles Corvin. Believe me, Bugsy Portnoy was an interesting character to portray because his swaggering, his viciousness, and his eventual and inevitable breakdown are typical of the small-time gangster with his usual delusions of grandeur. However, it is just as interesting to notice the contempt in which the other characters held the plain people whose coins in the slot machines made up the summertime take. These are people like you and me. People who lend their support to criminals because we don't stop to think about what we are doing. Because we are misled so many times by the simple words, innocent amusement. You see, in the end, it is up to us to stop this kind of criminal activity by the simple act of refusing to lend it our support under any and all circumstances. Yes, in the end, it is the plain people, the good citizens, who can prove that crime does not pay. Thank you, Charles Corbin. Crime Does Not Pay is written by Ira Marion and directed by Mark B. Lowe, with music composed and conducted by John Gart. Technical advisor is Burton B. Turkis. The events, characters, and names used in the story you've just heard are fictitious. Any similarity is purely coincidental. (laughs) 